Hello YouTube, my name's Nero and today we have some Call of Duty World at War custom zombies in this week's episode of Dear Nero, which of course is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions and I do us go ahead and answer them. The gameplay to cover on that's real quick. So first and foremost, I thought it was pretty cool that so many of you actually tried out World at War on the PC and so many of you were enjoying custom zombies. I made a video a couple days ago when they were actually doing the sale. Activision had one of its very rare sales where just about every single Call of Duty game on the PC was about half off or all the way up to 75% off in some cases and people are actually trying out custom zombies as a result of that video which is a whole lot of fun. The map I'm playing on in today's video is actually going to be called Warzone which is a really fun map. This is actually my first time ever playing on it. It's very open. It's on a beach. It's very open. Lots of Nazi stuff going in there. It's really weird man. It's a cool map. Like I found a Tommy gun like, on the ground off of a dead soldier. I thought that was a really cool mechanic. There's a little bit of looting to this map. It's pretty fun. Once again my first time ever playing the map so you get to explore it as I explore it for the very first time and hopefully you guys will enjoy the game. Gameplay. And if you would like to download it and try it for yourself, there's going to be a link to the zombie mining website down in the video description. I'll take you over to where you can download this particular map. Once again, its name is Warzone. So let's hop into here. Let's hop into these questions because there's a lot of good ones here. The first one is going to be kind of related to the gameplay. He's going to write, Dear Nero, what would you like to see in the Black Ops 3 zombie mode, Bryce from Florida? So Bryce, I would like to see more of the same, right? More of the same when it comes to zombies. I like to have a nice variety when it comes to the maps. Like, for example, we're playing on Warzone here. It is the most open map, or one of the most open maps. I don't think I've seen too many zombie maps that are set up in the same layout that you're going to be seeing throughout this video. It's a really cool setup for a map, and it's a really cool design. I would like for them to continue uh, on and trying out new things like that when it comes to the maps that Treyarch is actually putting together. You look at the maps that they've made, and they're all very different in their own respect. You look at Origins versus Mob of the Dead. Uh, you look at um, the underground one, which uh, the name is escaping me on the underground one right now. For some reason, I can't remember it. But uh, Die Rise was also just very different. They were all completely different, and they all tried out different things, and I like that. I like the setting. I like the changes that they make. But more importantly, when it comes to zombies, I want it to be like Treyarch zombies. You know, even though we know Black Ops 3 is going to have these thruster packs, and you're going to be able to jump around and stuff, I want to make sure that the zombies is going to be as much like Black Ops 2 zombies and Black Ops 1 zombies and World of War zombies as possible. I don't want this zombies experience to be kind of tailored in with the new movement system that they have. I don't really want that. I don't want us to be wall running in zombies and have that become a feature. I don't want it to be, uh, we have to do those like double jumps to be able to get up in the air and climb up on the certain areas and stuff like that. I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure some people would want that, but for me personally, I, I want it to be more traditional in terms of the movement system. But aside from that, I want them to continue on with what they're doing. I think uh, zombies is fantastic. Black Ops 2 was some of the best zombies, in my own opinion. It was what really got me into zombies. We already know that Black Ops 3 Zombies is going to have a rank up system or a progression system of some description in the game, and that's going to be pretty cool. I like that idea because the system they had in Black Ops 2 was pretty good. I liked uh, having the, the logos next to people's names, and I liked having the little tally markers, and if you played for five days straight, then you could, of course, get the glowy blue eyes and stuff. I like that whole system, and I would like to see them continue on with something like that, even maybe expand upon it somehow. I'd like to see combat records in there. It was fun knowing exactly how many zombies you've killed, you know. Even then, they could expand upon zombies, you know. Keep track of how many kills we've gotten with all the different weapons that you can actually play with in zombies. Like, for example, going back to Black Ops 2, wouldn't you like to know how many zombie kills you've gotten with a ray gun? How many kills you've gotten with an RPD? And that counts it being upgraded. Or how many kills you've gotten with the 1911, including when you upgrade the Mustang and Sally. How that works. You know, just keep track of all those little stats. I like to know all that kind of stuff. It's fun for me. So, uh, when I think of Black Ops 3 zombies, I just basically want it to be a lot like Black Ops 2 zombies because it was pretty good. But of course, with new maps and the new guns that are going to be in the game and all that stuff. That's what I'm really hoping for with Black Ops 3 Zombies. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you think that skill-based matchmaking and advanced warfare will improve us as Call of Duty players in Black Ops 3? Because advanced warfare, we are going up against tryhards every single game, and where in Black Ops 3, we will have the same matchmaking system as what we had in Black Ops 2, and it will feel like we are greatly improved at Call of Duty. What do you think? Will advanced warfare improve our skills in the later Call of Duty games to come? Fisher from Washington. So Fisher, I'm not entirely convinced that your abilities in Advanced Warfare are necessarily going to translate into Black Ops 3. So hear me out on this, because I think it can be argued both ways, but this is my own take on it. I feel as though the games are going to be so different that it's not necessarily going to translate 100% of your skill from Advanced Warfare into Black Ops 3. Now, the example I'm going to use here is the skills that you had in Black Ops 2 didn't necessarily translate well into Advanced Warfare, right? Because they're two completely different games. The movement system's a lot different, and it's just by the very nature of the fact that we have exosuits in Advanced Warfare. It's unlike any 
any other Call of Duty game that we've had so far. You know, you look at the fact that uh, some people are really good players, and they're really good players because they utilize their exosuits. They're constantly dashing, they're constantly sliding, they're very good, they can do the old double jump, and they can aim really well while they're in the air. And I see that a lot on DNA Saturday. Like, these people are ridiculously good at maneuvering with their exosuits, and it's amazing sometimes to see. It's like, wow, because well, I try to do the same stuff, but my aim is just not nearly as good as what they're doing there. They can move around like crazy, and they can still stay, you know, just perfectly spot on with their aim. That's not necessarily going to translate that well into Black Ops 3. Of course, it might a little bit with, like, the wall running and stuff, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, because there are going to be thruster packs in Black Ops 3, but from all the people that have actually played the game early, and keep in mind, it was still a very early build of the game, but still, they were able to play Black Ops 3 early, and they said it's a lot more like Black Ops 2 than it is Advanced Warfare, especially with the movement system. Even with the wall running, even with the thruster pack on your back, it's still more like Black Ops 2, or at least that's what people are actually saying. So, I feel as though if you were to try and make, like, prepare for the game, right, you should probably maybe play more Black Ops 2. I don't know, because everyone kind of does that, right? Um, I can remember, you know, when Modern Warfare 2 was coming out, everybody went back to Call of Duty 4 because we wanted to get ready for Modern Warfare 2 because we figured it'd be a lot more like Call of Duty 4 as compared to being like World of War, and that was kind of true because it was made by the same people, it was set in the same time span, and etc. Uh, when Black Ops was coming out, we went back and we played a bit more World of War because we assumed the game would be a lot, it, it, since it's both made by Treyarch, we figured it'd be more similar to World of War than it would be to Modern Warfare 2 or anything like that. You know, same thing kind of happens, right? When Black Ops 2 is coming out, a lot of you probably stopped playing Modern Warfare 3 and you went back to Black Ops to play that to quote-unquote get ready for the next game. And I think the same thing's going to happen in Advanced Warfare. I think towards the end of Advanced Warfare's life cycle, a lot more people than uh, have already gone back because, of course, so many people are playing Black Ops 2. But I feel as though there's going to be a number of people that are going back to Black Ops 2 after this so they can quote-unquote prepare for Black Ops 3 because the games are going to be a lot more similar compared to how Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3 are going to be, right? I don't think they're going to be super similar. I still think Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3 are going to be a lot more similar than Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, like you, I am a big fan of the Borderlands franchise, and I was wondering, where do you want the next installment of the series to take place? I'm hoping to go back on Pandora, which it most likely will be, because I really didn't care too much about Elpis. What are your thoughts, and do you think the Vault Hunters will stay or move on in search of more loot? Thanks, Dax from Arkansas. So, Dax, this is a very intriguing question. It's something I think I can go on for a very, very long time, but I understand not everybody that watches my channel is a giant fan of Borderlands, so I'll try to keep it short. I feel like the next Borderlands game, which I'm hoping would just be Borderlands 3 and not just like another pre-sequel or another take on some weird timeline thing. I'm just hoping it's a direct sequel to Borderlands 2, and that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, I feel as though it will be on Pandora because without spoiling anything, at the end of the pre-sequel, we learn that war is coming. Right? That's all I'm going to say. We learn that war is coming. I'm not going to say with who. I'm not going to say with what. I'm not going to say who's involved. I'm not going to say anything. But there's War is going to be coming, apparently, to Pandora, and we need to prepare for it. We need to be ready. I think that's perfectly setting up Borderlands 3, because keep in mind, what we saw at the end of the pre-sequel was actually after the events of Borderlands 2. There's a lot of timeline jumping here. You guys thought it's confusing with Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 and all that stuff? No. This is this is worse, man. The timeline jumping in freaking Borderlands is absurd. But yes, uh, the next game, Borderlands 3, which is going to be set after the events of Borderlands 2, I feel as though it's going to be set on Pandora, which is where I would like it to be set. And what actually, I, to get more specific, I want it to feature a lot of older Borderlands things and just see how time has affected it. I think people have heard me talk about that with remaking Call of Duty maps and stuff. I like that system. You know, I like that system in Borderlands as well. In Borderlands 2, you get to go back to Firestone, which was like the main first city you went to in Borderlands 1. You got to see how it changed, and of course, it changed a ton, but you still got to go ahead and see it. In Borderlands 3, I'd like to go back to New Haven. What happened to New Haven? Of course, it burned, but I want to, let's go back to New Haven for one reason or another. Let's go back to Old Haven for one reason or another. I want to check out all that stuff, right? I want to go back to a lot of the places we saw in Borderlands 1 and places we saw in Borderlands 2. And maybe even some places we saw in the pre-sequel. I think it'd be cool to have that go on. But I definitely think that the next game will be set on Pandora. I can't picture them going to another new world, especially considering, you know, they were off Pandora for the first game ever, and the pre-sequel, at least in my opinion, wasn't nearly as good as Borderlands 1 or Borderlands 2, and I feel so maybe a lot of the people will agree with that. I, I'm not sure. I, don't, I, I guess I don't have my finger on the pulse of the Borderlands community, but I feel as though that disconnect of you being up on the moon and the Vault Hunters not being any of the people that we've ever really kind of 
of seen before and not seeing like landmarks that we know and love like Sanctuary. I'd like to go back in Borderlands 3. I want, definitely want Sanctuary to play a role. Um, not to be able to go back to Sanctuary. Not to be able to go back to Firestone. Not, not seeing things that we're accustomed to, but rather just being on the moon with all kinds of moon creatures and zero gravity and stuff in Australian accents. It was, um, it was, it was different. It was definitely a lot different. So hopefully the next game will be back on Pandora. Hopefully it will be set after the events of Borderlands 2 and hopefully we'll be able to see a lot of stuff that we saw in Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2 but see how times actually affected it. We can kind of get to go back and explore stuff and have nostalgia kick in and stuff. I think that'd be pretty cool. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, with the recent rumors about the Activision Microsoft deal ending for Call of Duty games and maybe going over to PlayStation, will you purchase a PlayStation 4 so you can get the DLC early? Jacob from Indiana. So Jacob, this is a question a lot of people have been sending around, and I've seen other YouTubers answer this same question. It's like, yeah, uh, even though they're primarily Xbox players and have been for a long time, they say, yeah, if the exclusivity deal for the Call of Duty DLC goes over to Sony rather than being at Microsoft where it's been forever, and they get the DLC a month early, and Xbox players in turn have to wait a month to be able to get the DLC, a lot of YouTubers say they'll go over to the PlayStation 4. For me personally... I don't see too much of a reason to actually do it. Um, I don't know, man. Like, the DLC videos I make, I don't make a ton of DLC videos. I do map walkthroughs. I do usually a DLC review, kind of talking about DLC, talking about the four maps, and whatever bonus content comes out with the DLC as well. I talk about that stuff here on my channel, and I may post a little bit of bonus content, be it zombies, right, so zombies, or whatever. But usually, it's not a whole lot, and usually, the views aren't that great on the videos anyway, just because there's so many people out there, and this is something that Call of Duty themselves, are they're just doing now a lot of youtubers which i'm not one of them apparently uh actually get flown out and actually get to have access to dlc early and they're allowed to post you know full gameplays and full reviews and all that stuff of the dlc before it even comes out so for me I, I'm, I'm just sitting here trying to you know hey guys i know you guys have all probably seen this but uh i guess i'll do a map walkthrough now for you it's like i do it for the people that you know want to see the entire map before they actually go ahead and purchase it but if it comes down to will i purchase a brand new console just to record dlc a bit early I don't know. I think if I were to do it, I would have to, I'd have to get a bit more of an investment in there. I would have to want to, you know, buy a bunch of PlayStation games to go along with it. Maybe get a whole PlayStation account and maybe do Let's Plays with certain games and stuff like that. Because I, the idea of buying a PlayStation solely for the fact that I want to uh, play DLC when it comes out, it's like, ah, I don't know. But at the same time, it would be kind of fun, I suppose, to occasionally do open lobbies and stuff like that with PlayStation people. Because people have been asking me for that for years, uh, to play people on the PlayStation. So we'll see. I'm, I don't don't, I may do it if it goes over, if the exclusivity deal does actually change from Microsoft to Sony and so PlayStation users get DLC early. I may actually switch over, but if I were to do it, I'm going to do it with a bunch of other stuff as well. Like, I'm not going to become a full-on PlayStation player. I'm just going to be a person that owns both, I suppose. And I want to actually play stuff because the idea for me, it's like, here, allow me to buy this console and this game and all this stuff and PlayStation, or PlayStation Plus or whatever the live services you guys have there. I don't know what it's called. Uh, all that stuff just so I can play DLC once every two months. I, I don't want I don't want to do that. That just seems silly to me. So I'd have to buy a bunch of stuff. But MLB the show's on PlayStation. That'd be a whole lot of fun. Xbox hasn't had a good baseball game in years. So uh, maybe I would do it for that too. I don't know. We'll see. We'll definitely see you guys. Next question. He writes, Dear Nero, what do you think about the new melee system in Black Ops 3? And what do you think about a headshot melee being a one-hit kill, aka panic knifing with some skill? Also, I wanted to know your opinion on different melee weapons, like light and heavy weapons. I think it would fit Bla the Black Ops 3 theme perfectly. Imagine a robot transforming his hand into a sledgehammer and stomping the ground with it. This person did not leave his or her name. So... <laughs> You're, you're you're going crazy here with your question. So first and foremost, I love the idea of the new melee system in Black Ops 3. For those of you guys out there who are unaware, in Black Ops 3, they're changing around the melee system. So it's no longer going to be a one melee kill. So essentially, they're going to be eliminating panic knifing. Now, you can still get a one hit kill with your melee if you specifically pull out your knife. So for example, here in Advanced Warfare, back in Black Ops 2, I'm pretty sure in Call of Duty Ghost as well. Call of Duty Ghost is kind of a blur for me because uh, I haven't played it in so long. But uh, you know, you, you can if you don't have a secondary on your class, especially with like the pick 10 system, if you don't have a secondary on your class, just automatically you're gonna have like a combat knife as your secondary, right? If you actually pull out that combat knife and run around with it, if you actually you know knife somebody with that, it's gonna be a one hit kill. But aside from that, like let's say you're holding for all intents and purposes an AK-47, right, in your hands, and you turn a corner, guys, right there, you panic and you hit the melee button. Instead of you just like one knifing them, you're just gonna hit them with the butt of your rifle and knock them back a little bit, and then you have to hit them with the butt of your rifle again. You essentially have to melee them twice 
to actually get the kill, which is pretty amazing. And from what I've also heard, apparently if you sneak up on somebody from behind, you can get a one melee kill even by hitting them with the back of your gun, like an assassination style thing. We'll have to see if that's really the case, because of course it's kind of hard to be able to tell a lot of people are saying different things about this. But yeah, it definitely sounds like a really cool system. I'm very happy about that, because Advanced Warfare, I move around a lot. I'm trying to get better at it too. Like I'm trying to get better at you know sliding and, and just using the exosuit a lot more. I've kind of played like an old man when the game first came out recently. I'm trying to get a little bit more mobile and you'll be seeing that like in my gameplays. I'm sure you actually saw it in yesterday's video where we're using the M1 irons a bunch. Uh, I was sliding around a lot more and jumping a lot more and just trying to be a lot more mobile. And since I've started doing that, like I'll just like slide to a room or I'll go really quickly into a room or something like that. And I'll always get in like these, this, these bad breath distance situations with people and they just exo punch me. <laughs> it's like, man, I can't wait for that to not happen anymore. That's going to be a hoot. But yeah, I'm definitely a big fan of that. What is my opinion on the idea of a headshot melee being a one-hit kill, aka panic knifing with some skill? <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, if that would be implemented into the game, I don't think it'd be the worst thing in the world because knifing somebody's head, you're going to have to like aim really high up to be able to do something like that. And that would add a, a degree of skill to it rather than you know aiming at their waist or to their lower abdomen. Actually, like you see somebody, you, you quickly take your uh, joysticks, right? And you aim up a little bit and then knife trying to aim for the head. You know, that could be a fun little system. I don't think they would do that. That, but if they did, I wouldn't be against it whatsoever. And the idea of having different melee weapons, like light and heavy ones, um, that just seems like you're muddying the waters a bit, don't it? Uh, yeah, the idea, like a robot transforming his arm into a sledgehammer and maybe having like a, one of the specialists be like a, a, a melee character, which I guarantee there's one. I guarantee one of the specialists, I believe they said there's nine so far in Black Ops 3, I can guarantee one of them is a melee character, kind of like a maniac, kind of like a juggernaut maniac in a way, you know, that can have a bunch of health, and but he can only melee. I guarantee that's one of them, so we'll have to see but uh, yeah, I definitely am excited for the new melee system in Black Ops 3. Speaking of Black Ops 3, which keep in mind a lot of these questions are going to be Black Ops 3 related just because so many people are excited for the game, myself included. Next one, he's going to write... Dear Nero, do you think that there will be a Nuketown 2065 in Black Ops 3? Miguel from Iowa. Miguel, I'm going to say, man, I hope. I, I do. I really hope. Uh, Nuketown is a staple in Treyarch games, in my opinion. I love. I would love to see it in every game going forward. You know, it's one map, right? And I understand. I, I understand. There's some of you guys out there that don't like Nuketown. I get it. I understand it. Some people just don't like the way it plays. They were never a big fan of it. Whatever. I love it. I've always loved Nuketown. I love the flow of it. I love the way it's set up. Uh, if you see my montage I get so many clips on that map just because I know it inside and out on both games. I play it so much. I just enjoy the layout of it. I like seeing the changes. You know, I'm excited to see how it's going to look in 2065. But I'm also wondering how different it's going to be if there's actually like wall running and stuff. Is it going to make the map itself not as good? We'll have to see. Who knows? Who knows? But I would definitely like the opportunity to find out. Right? I definitely want Nuketown 2065 to be a thing in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Next question. He writes... Dear Nero, do you prefer the Black Ops 1 combat record or the Black Ops 2 combat record? Personally, I prefer the Black Ops 1 combat record because it gave you a lot of cool miscellaneous information that's just fun to know. Ben from the UK. Ben, I'm going to totally agree with you here. I, I thought the Black Ops 1 combat record was amazing. And when we the hype for Advanced Warfare was initially happening and they said that, yeah, we're going to have a Black Ops 1 style combat record. It is in some respects, but it's not nearly as detailed. I want an exact like replica, a copy and paste of the Black Ops 1 combat record because you get so much useless information in that thing that it's amazing i love knowing what weapon has killed me the most i would love to know that in advanced warfare personally just so i could you know it's all the people out there they're like oh no the asm1's not overpowered the ball 27's not overpowered it's like oh does that explain why 60 percent of my deaths in this game are to those two guns alone like i would love to be able to actually have stats to back up my claims but of course they don't actually show that which is really annoying i love the fact that i can look at my combat record in black ops 1 and see how many grenades i've thrown i actually remember it specifically or relatively specifically I know that there are over 20,000 grenades. I've thrown over 20,000 grenades in Black Ops 1, and I've gotten whatever X amount of kills. You know, I throw so, I've thrown so many grenades. Like, literally over 20,000 times I have thrown a grenade in that game. I, I know exactly how many times I've thrown a Semtex. I know exactly how many times I've thrown out a C4. How many times I've planted a Claymore. How many kills I've gotten with a Claymore. How many times have I called in a UAV. How many kills have I got with a Chopper Gunner. How many times have I done random stuff. I don't know. It's fun. I like I like seeing all that random useless and information i think it's cool i like knowing exactly how many times i've called in uh, uh attack dogs or something like that you know i like seeing my win loss ratio in free for all for this week you know or stuff like that you know it's cool seeing all that information because i'm a stats nerd i've always been in one way or another just a stats nerd i love looking up the weirdest most useless pointless information you know i used to sit there in school back when i was in high school 
if we were at the computer lab and I had like free time and stuff like that, I would get like on Wikipedia or I would get on Google and I'm a bit, I'm a football fan because you know, like uh, NFL American football and I like the Cleveland Browns. And so I would like go and look through their draft history and it's like, okay, so in 2003, the Cleveland Browns drafted this player in the first round. Here is a list of five really good players that they missed out on. They're stars in the NFL now. And I did that for like every single year, just like looking up the most random of stats. You know, you see that sometimes in a lot of sports shows like, oh, Peyton Manning has like a seven. 78.5 win percentage on Thursday nights if it's raining outside or something like that. That's a stupid stat, but you guys get what I'm saying. I love that kind of information, right? I think it's just fun to have all that kind of weird, useless stats, and I'm hoping that we have that kind of system in Black Ops 3 with our combat record. I hope they go back to a Black Ops 1 style system. Black Ops 2 was okay, but it just wasn't nearly as detailed and as fun as the Black Ops 1 one. Next question, he's going to write... Dear Nero, do you think that certain players are naturally good at video games such as Call of Duty, or do you believe that it is down to practice? Before I play Call of Duty online, I always train in local play by playing against bots to get my aim better. I have been doing this since I started playing Call of Duty, and I find that it's extremely beneficial. Do you do the same? If you don't, I would recommend it. From Benusi. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right, but Benusi. So, uh, first and foremost, the first part of your question, do I think that certain players are naturally good at video games such as Call of Duty, or do I believe it's sound to practice? I think yes. Yes, I think it's definitely plausible that people are just naturally good at things because it works that way in like literally every other aspect of life. There's people who are naturally good at things. Like for example, when I was in school, I was naturally good at history class. I could remember dates and I had a genuine interest in it and so I always did really good at history. I was also always very good at English. For some reason, I was very talented at writing essays and things of that nature. I just apparently was good at it. Just naturally, it came to me and I was okay at it. When it came to things like algebra, when it came to things like science, uh, I didn't have a much of an interest in those subjects and I definitely struggled in them a lot more because it just did not click with me like uh, following algebra formulas and just remembering things like periodic tables and remembering a bunch of things from science class just didn't really stick with me very well I just naturally wasn't that good at it I was always pretty good at sports I was always pretty good at things like baseball I was thinking good at things like football American football or even European football or I guess soccer whatever you want to call it I was good at that as well I played defenseman for the most part I, I was just naturally good at a lot of sports but I wasn't like amazing at a lot of them but I was naturally good enough to be able to compete at usually a higher level than most other people out there but yeah I think that's about it I was never the best but I was always above average at a lot of things and video games just happen to be one of those things whereas there's other people who are just naturally not that good at certain kinds of video games and they have to actually try a lot harder at it to try to be at the same level as other people who aren't really trying that hard at all I think that's definitely something that happens and I think there's a lot of players out there who are naturally just good at Call of Duty and they kind of take that for granted and there's other people who just naturally weren't good at Call of Duty maybe they don't have very good twitch reflexes maybe they have trouble understanding how the games are played or how the maps are flowing and things like that but uh, the more they practice the better they get that's what i've always said about video games people always say how do you get better at call of duty it's like just play if the more you play the better you're gonna get the game you're gonna you know think you're gonna have memories you're gonna have like this muscle memory when it comes to the game and it's gonna be like riding a bike you're just gonna become a lot better of a player over time you're just by the very nature you put in a bunch of time you're gonna become good at that game so it definitely works out well for both parties and whether you're naturally good at the game or you're not the more you play the better you're gonna get regardless and to answer the other part of your question do i play against bots when i first get on not usually i don't usually end up playing against bots although it can be a lot of fun like playing against bots is just like a little self-esteem booster it's like ah look at me i'm just like this destroying everything it's a lot of fun so uh, i don't do it but i can definitely see the benefit from it if you wanted to get on instead of like warming up in games like uh back when i was like a search and destroy only player we would get on and i would play like team deathmatch just to warm up my aim before going into search and destroy uh you're it seems like you're doing the same thing when uh, you're facing bots and then you go into the online matches so uh, it seems like you're doing about the same thing and it is definitely beneficial to uh, warm up a little bit before you actually go in there and start facing people so uh, i guess it's to each his own when it comes to that next and final question He's going to write, Dear Nero, why do you think people keep on buying the new Call of Duty? I started with Black Ops 1, and I see now that I have bought a few Call of Duty games, like COD Ghost and Advanced Warfare, and I just stopped playing after about half a year, and I just go back to the older Call of Duties. And I think to myself, what a waste of money, but I keep on buying the new Call of Duty every year. Why do you think people do that? From Aaron in the Netherlands. And Aaron, first and foremost, man, we're on sentences, man. I there wasn't a single period in that whole message. But uh, why do people keep buying the new Call of Duty game? First and foremost, uh, your problem is not really a problem. You're saying only after six months you get tired of the most recent Call of Duty and start playing the other ones? How is that a waste of money? If you pay $60 for a game and it takes you six months to get tired of it, that's 
pretty good bang for your buck compared to like a single player game where you're gonna you know be done with it in a week <laughs> you know oh well, i guess it depends on the single player game you know some of them uh, there's some single player games out there that have like a four to five hour campaign and that campaign doesn't have a lot of replayability then there's other single player games that are like massive giant open worlds where you can put in like 2,000 hours and you'll still not have seen every single thing that there actually is to see within the game so first and foremost man i don't think you're you're, you're wasting your money if you only get tired of call of duty after six months now if you're one of the people that gets tired of call of duty after a few weeks then yeah that might have been kind of a waste of money but at the same time call of duty i've said many times man has always been just one of the best bang for your buck games out there because you buy the game for 60 dollars, and even if you buy like the season pass you buy additional uh, micro dlc and stuff like that you look at the amount of hours that most players put into call of duty versus the amount of money they spent that is ridiculously cheap compared to other games you know you buy a single player game for 60 dollars that has a six hour campaign then you look at that you're like oh why well, basically just spent ten dollars an hour to actually play this game whereas you look at call of duty where you're gonna put 10 days of play time into the multiplayer alone not counting the single player not counting the zombies wherever extra special mode you get there and you look at that versus your 60 dollars you know you're getting a lot bigger of a bang for your buck when it comes to call of duty and i think that's one of the big reasons people keep on buying the new call of duty is because call of duty itself has a very simple formula uh you get online and you start playing in people the, mo the most played game mode in every single call of duty game is always team deathmatch because it's very simple you know you're on one team the opponents are on the other team you kill each other first team to 75 or 100 or whatever wins right that's how it's always gone down and it's simple enough you have your guns you have your perks you get to put together your setup and you have all the fun of a first person shooter believe it or not first person shooters the most fun part is usually the gun shooting part a lot of people like call of duty for that they like to they like playing around with the guns and shooting and just enjoying themselves and that's why because every single game you get new maps you get new guns and you get new perks and new kill streaks and you but you, at the same time you're still usually staying true to that traditional Call of Duty formula, which is hop on, shoot at some other people, and enjoy yourself. And it's got the same 60 FPS fluidity that it's always had. That's one of the big parts of a lot of games on console, especially haven't been able to run at 60 frames per second consistently. Like you look at Battlefield, it was 30 FPS forever. I'm pretty sure is the new is Battlefield Hardline 30 FPS on the Xbox One. I want to say it is, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so it's definitely Call of Duty is a fun game for whatever reason. I think there's a lot of things that you, if you want to try and put your finger on the pulse of this, I think it's gonna be pretty hard. But there's a lot of reasons why people like Call of Duty, and the reason why people continue to buy it year after year is because they get an updated experience of the game that they were playing last year and the game they played last year they already got more than their money's worth with the sheer amount of playtime they put into it they're like okay i played a ton of this game i had a ton of fun with it now i'm gonna buy this new game i'm gonna play on new maps and i'm gonna play out with new guns and new kill streaks and have a new graphics setup because every game does feel fundamentally different than the one before it and they're going to enjoy it and if six months in you get kind of tired of the new game and you want to go play one of the giant list of older call of duty games you can do that as well because you already own them and the Call of Duty games definitely have a lot of replayability. Heck, I've been playing Call of Duty 4 since 2007 off and on, man. I've played that game a ton. i played a ton. World of War here, you're seeing in this video, man. World of War came out in 2008. Here I am in 2015 playing custom zombies on the PC. Man, it's just a really cool replayable game. It's just a whole lot of fun, man. Call of Duty is fantastic. And that is this week's episode of Dear Nero and I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel V deserves and if you guys would like to submit your questions for next Next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. That's all you need to do. Go to my YouTube channel, go to the About tab, and from there you'll find the Send Message button. Send me your question. I read through them all every Wednesday, pick out the ones I like, and I answer them on that week's episode of Dear Nero. That's how it's always worked. It's been We've been doing this for over 140 weeks now. We are well over 140 episodes in the Dear Nero. Very simple formula, and we still continue to do it every single week, and you guys still seem to enjoy it, so we keep on doing it. So once again, though, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Please be sure to leave a rating. Hope you guys all Have a wonderful day.